the better we become at targeting our customers, the more you risk that they will be, you know, feel intruded. And then law enforcement sort of needs to regulate that. And I think GDPR to some extent maybe is, a, in a way, let's say, overdoing is a wrong word, but it's a, it's a very strict and clear mark in the ground that whereas now we're sort of, we need to sort of balance, balance things out. <laughs> Hi and welcome. I'm Andy North with Velocitize. I'm joined today by Diedrich Fjellstadt from Scandinavian Airlines, VP of Marketing. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You've been in marketing for most of your career with great brands, well-known brands like Carlsberg and SAS. How does marketing, particularly digital marketing, need to stand out to cut through the noise now? And what are the new rules of engagement, if there are any? Yeah, so that's one of the big questions, isn't it? I, well, for one thing, for starters, it's definitely not the same game as it was when, when I started. Uh, some 15 plus years ago. Um, I see the environment around us is changing and so is the sort of the, 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 the DNA of, of, uh, of brand marketing. Rules of engagement, I'd say of course digitalization has, has fundamentally shifted our focus. Sort of the, the professional, the functional part of marketing is, has shifted from a very, very sort of creative communication approach to a more analytical data driven digital approach, which I think is a step change. Um, however, what's sort of the key still, and you could argue that it's always been, is, um, is consumer engagement and relevance, right? And it's the, it's the ability to be relevant at, at, I would say, even more um, stages of the customer journey. Uh, so if you manage to sort of balance your brand positioning and your brand engagement generally, uh, plus uh, deliver a brand experience which is more granular from data analytics, I think you're good. You mentioned your career. Yeah. Uh, you've had a fantastic career, uh, much of it in marketing, if not all. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen, as we all have, sort of the evolution of mar marketing from sort of the old days of, of straight ads and so forth uh, into digital experiences, yeah. uh, going from, from global brands like Carlsberg and Scandinavian Airlines. What do you see coming next? What do you see within the next five to ten years in the evolution of marketing? Yeah, I mean that's uh, if I if I knew I would uh, probably be uh, be asked to do a keynote next year at South by right. Uh, so what what we're seeing, I mean, it, it is it is really a journey for us, right? And I, and I think what we're currently seeing is it's it's a it's a ruthless race to being relevant, right? Uh, for all of us I mean, within my industry, within any any professional that works with bands, right? that's what we're really really figuring, we're trying to figure out the key of combining data and creativity basically, right? Uh, and it's, I think we're almost getting there. Uh, the next, which is happening, and uh, we might, might be talking about that also a bit, little bit later, is the anxiety of that. So, you know, when you get too close to people and you use data a lot, people get scared, right? And then you have laws coming in and you have GDPR and then starting to restrict you, right? Um, so I think there's, there's two things that will come there's a, a thing that will come back even stronger, uh, and there is a new element. So the, the, the thing that will come back and be even stronger is, is purpose. I mean, purpose marketing has never been a way, uh, but the why of being a brand is absolutely crucial. We cannot talk about our CSR strategy as being something in the cupboard. It is something that needs to be in the heart of what we do to engage our own um, people inside the company, to engage with our customers, to be relevant, and to be authentic and trustworthy as a brand. So CSR, sustainability, people care, has to be in the core uh, of, of any brand, I would argue. So purpose-driven marketing, I think, will come back uh, also in two and three years and be, be even stronger and, uh, and, 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 and essential, uh, essential. The second part is naturally um, innovation and tech. And you could always, uh, ask yourself, would it be AI, would it be uh, augmented reality, what's the thing? I don't think there'll be a thing. I, I, I don't really necessarily fall in. I'm not that, I'm not the tech geek. I don't believe necessarily in the format or the, or, or the technology itself. What I'm interested in is how we manage to utilize that technology and make it relevant for the brand in a context of the consumer, right? So I think the, 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 the brands that will win will manage to combine and balance those interesting, incredibly fascinating new technologies in a way 
that, that can be replicated, that can be scaled, that can be relevant for the customer. And whether that's AI or whether it is something else, I, I don't know. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, you'll be good if you, you're balancing it and always bring the, the customer in the, in the center of what you're doing. You mentioned GDPR. We're, we're also working with, through that. Uh, we have, obviously, we have offices in London and Limerick and so forth, mm. uh, growing our, our presence yep. in, in the EU. Um, this, the struggle between data, privacy, mm. all of that, uh, I think everyone's trying to come to terms with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, as an airline, how do you see that affecting you? Uh, how, are, how are you working through it? What are your, your thoughts on the, the whole uh, issue? First and foremost, let's say philosophically, I kind of, uh, it's very ex an expected reaction some, somewhat. I mean, the more, um, the more, the better we become at targeting our customers, the more you risk that they will be, you know, feel intruded and then law enforcement sort of needs to regulate that. And I think GDPR to some extent maybe is a, in a way, let's say overdoing is a wrong word, but it's a, it's a very strict and clear mark in the ground that whereas now we're sort of, we need to sort of balance, balance things out. And I think that's fine. And, and we don't, we understand that. We think it's good because we don't want to be invasive. We don't want to exploit anyone's data. We're, we're using data to enhance the, the experience. Uh, that's what we want to do, and uh, and the risk, of course, is if you don't respect that, which we've seen several examples of, is that is that it, it can go wrong. So we wel we welcome GDPR, of course, for us like anyone else, it's a tough, complex job, right? Because IT the whole infrastructure needs to be sort of revisited. So it feels like we're cleaning all our cupboards and all our you know it's like it's like it's it's a bit that's it, that's tough. It is. From a brand uh, brand perspective, it means practically that I'll I'll I, I can I'll be a bit more restricted in the extent I can utilize personalized data or the data we have in a personalized way uh, from day one. Simply because you need to accept the new terms and conditions, you need consent, right? Which is which is fine, and but it does mean that I'll I'll be a bit restricted. However, over time, it will balance out because people will get more used to it. People will, uh, people will hopefully, if I'm doing my job, understand that we want to be good to our customers. We want to provide them extra value. We don't want to misuse their data. We want to utilize them to offer them the best possible product or service or experience. Uh, and I think that will be sort of a, a process, um, which will take some time. How long? I don't know. But, uh, but it's, an, it's sort of a necessary bump on the road, if you want. Um, so that's fine. We're okay with that. So let's talk about integrated marketing. What are your thoughts there? You've you've obviously come through Carlsberg, you've come through SAS. Yeah. Uh, what's the evolution there? What are your thoughts on integrated marketing? I, I th for me personally, I think for our team and the way we work with marketing in SAS internally, structurally, uh, this is our game changer. And, we, uh, and in a in a way, it's simple, because what we've done is we've we've gathered. Uh, there's basically three central elements in, in how we work with brand mar marketing from an organizational point of view. You have brand strategy, which is insight driven. It's relatively a, sort of a traditional department, if you want. Yeah, you have uh, customer analytics, CRM, right? So all the customer data uh, is in one department. Um, and then we have gathered uh, digital campaigns, creative campaigns. Um, uh, to, uh, and media in, 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 in one approach. And the reason is that you cannot and there is no way we can continue to not think distribution, so media, into creative development. There's no, it doesn't exist anymore. So I can't have two different approaches to creativity and data the, and, and, and media. We, tr content has to travel and you need to think that into the creative process. Uh, and combining that in one department, in our case, has, has been a mind shift because nobody cares. It doesn't matter what department, departments you have internally if you don't change your behavior, right? Uh, but the behavioral change has been a paradigm shift for us. Uh, and we clearly see that we, we're now suddenly challenging our partners, our media partners, our creative partners, just by the way we brief, the way we expect them to think because we force them to collaborate. We force them to integrate their ways of working uh, with, uh, w with us. Um, so that's, that's one part of it. And the other part is that having that uh, sort of approach to your, let's say, bought 
media um, and your external agencies integrates perfectly into our uh, internal channels, right? So, so you, when you attach those two thinkings, uh, it becomes omnichannel. And omnichannel is a, is a wonderful buzzword, which doesn't mean anything unless you use it, right? Uh, is, is where we're at because we structurally have made changes internally. We have the tech stack, we have all the data, all that is sorted, sorted out. Now we're actually behaving in an omnichannel context. And I think that's incredibly exciting to work with from a, from a professional point of view and, a, and from an efficiency point of view. We're seeing huge, uh, huge efficiencies. So that's, um, that's very exciting. Uh, I, let's talk globalization a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, and perhaps there is no more better example of globalization than an airline. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And you talked about taking a, a point of view, a lifestyle, a mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. uh, from one particular part of the world and, and literally sharing that with yep. the world. Sure. Uh, how, do you see, how do you see your role in that, in the globalization? Of uh, so that's a, that's a very interesting question. And I, if we start with the why, right? Um, you, uh, there's two sort of central drivers in what we think and what I think. The, the first is to tra the, the, the travel, travel makes you a, a better person. When you, we, we know that from science. You, you, you become more in, inspired, you, you, get more, you become more tolerant, you, you, you become more creative. When you travel, you open your mind, right? So you, you get exposed to new things. Um, the other thing is that we, uh, in Scandinavia, all, all the way back from the Vikings, and you can, you can you, I know when I say Vikings, you think you have all sorts of pictures in your head, but the basis of the fundamental, um, uh, uh, fundamentals of the welfare state was created back in the Viking Age, and, it, and, and that was because they traveled. They traveled out, and they were trusted to come back and improve the society, right? So that's the fundamentals of Scandinavia. And our company was fo founded in 70 years ago, basically built on that thinking. We should, we need to come together and, and sort of interconnect with the world so that we can improve our society. Uh, and that's what I believe in. That's the why for us. We think that travel makes the world a better place because it inspires people. And we're from Scandinavia, so we build that on the values that our, our region of the world stand from. Democracy, people care, sustainability. And it's not because it's uh, buzzwords, it's because we really mean it and, we, and it's, it's part of what we, what we really believe in. So I, I believe that we can utilize that as an approach when, you, when you're talking about global and local. Uh, I think we can have a voice uh, in, uh, in a social, cultural uh, context uh, as a brand uh, and make a difference. Um, so that's what we're, what we're definitely trying to achieve. Our guest today has been Diedrich Fjellstad from Scandinavian Airlines. I really, really appreciate you joining us and uh, have a great South by Southwest. Thank you very much, sir.